I V M. This episode of Know Your Kanun was recorded outdoors, so please excuse the quality of audio. Hi and welcome to Know Your Kanun. This is Amber from Corpus Legal, and in today's episode, we'll be covering up the issues pertaining to the aggregators which provide us different kind of services. such as ola uber urban club swiggy and zomato and how can we hold them liable for deficiency of service under consumer law under civil law and under criminal law so it'll be a three part episode first of all let's look at the situations currently at hand and that is regarding you know uber being uh, the most commonly used or zomato i would rather say being the most commonly used uh, aggregator app in our daily lives which we look up to for traveling and they form a formidable part of our household we all must have heard of the famous rape case that took place in 2014 after that in 2017 where there have been so many other uh, allegations uh, against uber and its drivers for performing misconduct and uh, uber has again i mean if you read through their policies retreated and said that the drivers are not their employees and they cannot be prosecuted directly by anybody and uh, they claim to only be the aggregators Now uh, let's look at it from first of all a consumer point of view. Agreed to the point that you know they've definitely given out their terms and conditions, but nonetheless they are again service providers. And once an individual is a service provider, they do have the liability to ensure that the service which is provided is of a higher class and of a certain standard to the consumers. However, in many of the cases which I have seen or practically which have come up with the consumer court have been ones where. Uh, Uber has directed people to the respective terms and conditions which they share when we log into their app or when we agree to use the app that you know they are only the aggregators they do not represent as employees and their liability is strictly only related to uh, any deficiency in the app per se which also is not express but implied in terms if you read through it now in this case what all our listeners can do all consumers can definitely approach the consumer courts the consumer courts previously and currently in our scenarios have definitely taken up this view point that uh, the uber and other such aggregators cannot take claim themselves absolved of these liabilities because they are definitely engaged in providing a service whether the driver was employed with them or not it was their duty to provide a service which was satisfying because on their site and in their promotions in their videos if you look through it they always mention and and respectively to to all the ads which we saw during world cup they mentioned that they will be providing world class rides which will be having following benefits now in that situation when they are expressly saying that they are definitely providing this service they cannot shy away in case there have been a deficiency to give you a classic example there has been a petition also filed regarding the rates which fluctuate while booking the uh, cab through the app and it is very pertinent if you look at uh, different scenarios uh, for example in case if you open the app and uh, at peak hours if you book it the rate goes into 6x times subsequently within half an hour if you book again it might just be the lower lower price so the price is being controlled by these individuals and uber uh, cannot absolve itself from this liability because it is knowingly regulating the data which is available to them on the platform so consumer courts have not shied away from that and have said that individuals can claim compensation in case they incur loss due to loss of service now i have taken a series in my previous uh, season on consumer laws those consumer laws similarly apply here and i'll reiterate what that is any relationship where an individual is acting as an agent on behalf of the other and is engaged in providing a service which reflects that uh, the principal is the main person on behalf of whom the agent is doing the service then the principal shall be held liable hence in case of aggregator apps whether it is a rider for zomato whether it is a rider for uh, swiggy or whether it is ola or any other such app where you specifically feel the aggregator is providing a service in case there is a deficiency in case it is not up to mark the aggregators definitely can be held liable the volume and uh, the intent you should take that into consideration while filing the cases there are three stages of filing the cases in uh, in all of these cases the first one being at the district level which is the district consumer forum then at the state level and then at the national level uh, what type of cases will be con- covered under the consumer uh, law let's look at that kind of a scenario in that kind of a scenario what i can suggest is 
केसेस वेर दी यूबर ड्राइवर कॉज यू टू वेट फॉर मोर देन थर्टी मिनट्स और मोर देन टेन मिनट्स और फाइव मिनट्स और वट एवर दी टी एज एंड देन कैंसिल योर राइड अगेन एंड अगेन नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ दिस फील दैट यू नो इट इज ओके वील बुक अनदर राइड सो इट ऑल्सो डिपेंड्स ऑन द ग्रेविटी ऑफ द सिचुएशन Abroad, there have been cases where, when such situation has occurred, people have sued uh, them for deficiency of service, or, I mean, time is priority minus in India, right? So, so where they prioritize time? I mean, a case uh, happened in Australia where uh, the Uber driver uh, was being booked again and again. He said he's coming in after five seven minutes. The individual cancelled the ride, and uh, the aggrieved customer filed a consumer complaint. That was a genuine complaint. The court took it up and awarded them damages. similarly in situations where um, where you know the guy has misbehaved with you on the app you see there are different options where they mention that you know please press the option then we will take action yes indeed that is one of the actions but what does a consumer do so a consumer can definitely file uh, a consumer complaint where uh, there has been a deficiency of service whether it is the right quality whether it is the driver behaving in a particular manner where in case you incurred some loss where you've been overcharged also at situations where there has been a mispayment where you lost some belongings you were asked to retrieve it from the cab the individual did not do it you can proceed to the court and definitely uh, get a recourse under the consumer law now these are very generic and basic scenarios somebody had asked me a question the other day uh, what about food that got spoiled uh, while coming uh, you know uh, through the zomato app and uh, the zomato guys have questioned that they had sent it back properly and the rider had sent them a photo that it's packed properly then how can you dispute that now in those situations you know what i suggest is that uh, you definitely can file a consumer complaint yes because see for you it is the end product which has come to you so i suggest to be very careful that the packet be opened in front of that individual the photo be clicked and kept at that time and be presented to the consumer court in case if that is not happening and you feel uh, you know zomato is being tricky by saying that they are not liable for their riders you can always file a civil suit for uh, damages against them now that's a wide term i'm using civil suit to go into specifics you can always say that the that the quality or the food which was delivered to you or was mentioned as per the uh, terms and agreement you are agreeing to the aggregated terms and conditions they were not up to mark but that really leaves us with a limited scope of filing uh, cases and going against these uh, bodies so the best in the first part is to to cover uh, the dispute under the consumer courts and uh, have relative and substantial evidence with you to proceed against them i would not say much on this because i would want you guys to write in to me and um, and mention your queries so that i can make this more expandable it's going to be a three series session as i rightly said where i take up consumer civil and criminal law so please write in to me at contact at corpuslegal.in so that with this session where i have spoken generically about uh, accountability of the aggregators you can write up to me your queries and we can discuss the same uh, in the coming episodes i'm going to come up and talk about civil law in a generic way like the consumer law here also about the criminal law in generic like this in that particular way you can give me your specific queries and we can combine them and in the three series of episodes we will try to cover as much as possible with maximum detailings as to what can be brought against uh, the aggregators coming back again to my uh, main forum agenda uh, in 2016 another uh, incident had happened of eve teasing in the cab now the lady did pursue a criminal and a civil case separately but there was also a situation where uh, she had mentioned that the tire got punctured and the cab was parked on the left side of the street and this incident is not pertaining to india so uh, the cab was parked on the street uh, the tire needed to be changed and then um, she had to proceed but in the meanwhile she got eve teased in such situation her consumer dispute came from the fact that you know irrespective of the civil and the criminal matters that i'm filing my redress was that uh, the cab driver had not maintained his car properly on account of which there was a deficiency in service the car was stinking it was not nice the seats had a problem and the tire was not up to date due to which she got late for her meetings or whatever was the was the channel she said where she was supposed to be on account of which she incurred major losses thus she proceeded with filing of the civil suit and the consumer dispute as well along with the criminal case for claiming of uh, these damages deficiency in service and uh, for that you don't need uh, some supervening circumstances any basic deficiency in service which you feel which for which you have paid or you've done like even in case of societies i spoke about 
There are three basics of any consumer dispute which a consumer should keep in mind. There should have been a service provided. The provider of service must have promised a quality of uh, definitely a degree, quality or a degree of care in providing that service. How these advertisements work and mention on their sites that we provide the best in class service, etc., etc. Uh, the consumer must have believed that and should have paid a particular amount of money to avail that particular service. And in turn, the service turns out to be deficient, is not up to those standards, marks or degree of care. Then all consumers with regards to these aggregators have the right to process and proceed against um, them in the consumer court. And the consumer court does award damages in case there is a deficiency of that particular service in all reasonability and genuinity. There should have been a deficiency in this. The deficiency should be of such that you are dissatisfied with that particular service. And thirdly and lastly is that you were misled by that particular advertisement or that particular uh, service which was provided to you and in turn it was a bad experience. I'm using all these layman's terms and repeating myself again and again so that you do understand that uh, in order to claim a consumer dispute relief or a consumer relief in case of a consumer dispute, you just need to prove that the service for which you paid for or for which you agreed to avail the service was not up to the mark. And at many places it was lacking. The Consumer Court does take these matters up. Thank you for listening to Know Your Kanoon. For more queries and questions, please contact me at contact at corpuslegal.in. Catch Know Your Kanoon every week on the IVM website or the app or anywhere you get your podcast from. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you enjoy listening to content on the IVM Podcast Network, let me tell you about a couple of things that you should check out this week. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam is joined by Sanjay Sapre. He's the president of Franklin Templeton, India. They discuss the 25-year journey of Franklin Templeton and the role of mutual funds. On Vartha Lab, host Akash and Naveen are joined by rapper Onkar Pujari, who goes by the stage name Yeda Anna. The three of them talk about Onkar's journey in the Indian rap scene. On the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast, Ashwin and Varun review the India vs. West Indies Test Series and the standout performances by Hanuma Vihari, Ishan Sharma and Jaspreet Bumrah. On Tech Careers in the News, Shiladitya is joined by Sudarshan Rumta. He's a managing director at Accenture and he's in charge of the Oracle practice. They discuss Oracle's capability and impact in the real world. Thanks and we hope to see you again soon. Look! Up in the internet! It's a meme! No! It's a cat video! No! It's the Geek Fruit Podcast. That's right. We interrupt this riveting broadcast to tell you about our show, The Geek Fruit Podcast, where Tejas, Dinkar, and I, Jishnu, talk about everything in pop culture, including DC, Marvel, Star Wars, Netflix, and everything in between. You know how your friends hate it when you ramble about some nerdy crap and you just want somebody to listen to you? Well, sorry, there's nothing we can do about that, but come listen to us ramble and it'll almost be like the real thing. Kind of. Listen to new episodes of the Geek Fruit Podcast every Monday and the Geek Fruit Bulletin every Thursday on iTunes, Google Podcasts, the IVM app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy listening, you nerds.